Hello and welcome to another geometry lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 2, Lesson 8 on Translations. So we have now have our rigid motions of rotations and the specialized point reflection, and we have line reflections. Today we're going to look at translations, which are the third and last of our major rigid body motions. So let's get right into them and discuss translations. Now, before we can examine the rigid motion known as a translation, we must first look at something known as a vector. All right, so let's take a look at geometric vectors. A geometric vector, or just vector, is a given straight line distance in a particular direction. It can be defined by a line segment with a designated starting and ending point. All right, now I want to kind of give a nod to something right away if I've got anyone out there watching this that's like a parent or something like that. All right, the term vector is used all over the place. It's used in physics, it's used in economics, it's used in geometry. All right, so you know, a lot of times vectors in physics are defined as being something that has both magnitude, which is size, and direction, which is pretty much the case here. We're talking about basically something that has a length and a particular direction. So let's take a look at something very easy in exercise number one. For each of the following, draw the designated vector, the vector from A to B. So if I just said draw the line segment that goes from A to B, well, it wouldn't matter whether it went from A to B or B to A. But the vector from A to B is specifically right, something that has a length, which is the same length as segment AB, but specifically points in this direction. So that is the vector that points from A to B. And quite frankly, this vector is the same vector whether it's here, 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 or here. The idea is not the starting point and the ending point. The idea is the length of the vector and the direction in which it points. So I think you can probably do letter B and letter C pretty easily. Why don't you pause the video now and go ahead and draw those two vectors. All right, so the vector from E to D, that's simple enough, right? We'll just put our straight edge at E, rotate it up. I always kind of like to end the vector a little bit short of my point and draw in my arrow. And the vector from Q to R, again, all we have to really be paying attention to and making sure of here is that we are doing the vector in the right direction from Q to R. And again, the vector is not about point A and point B or E and D. It's about how far and in what direction. All right, let's keep going. Now, translations. All right, let's take a look at what a translation is. A translation maps or moves each point in the plane by a certain distance in a certain direction. All points move parallel to each other. This can be defined using a given vector. All right, so this is really the only reason that we needed to talk about vectors is because when we do a translation, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be shifting or sliding or moving every point in a given geometric figure the same distance in the same direction. So let's take a look at exercise number two. Translate each triangle shown below using the vectors drawn, drawn from each vertex. Then verify they are congruent by using tracing paper. All right, so the idea here is that I've got point A and I've got the image of point A, A prime, after a vector that points from A to A prime. I've reproduced the same vector from B and from C. And again, if you don't believe me, right, if I just kind of outline this vector, maybe I should have done that red, right, and then move it, that's the same vector here and the same vector here. All right, so all those vectors are the same. I'm gonna now delete that, okay? So literally, if I'm going to translate this triangle from point A to point A prime, right, then I've got point B prime here, point C prime here, and then I will get my triangle A prime, B prime, C prime, right like this. 
I overshot A prime there a little bit. That's okay. All right. It's kind of cool. It starts to look very three-dimensional at this point. And in fact, if I take right, my triangle that should be on A and move it over, I see that yes, right? These two triangles are in fact congruent, which means translations are a rigid body motion. Why don't you go ahead and draw a triangle E prime, F prime, G prime over there? This is the kind of math we like, right? There's not, not much we have to do here. Right? We've got uh, F prime, G prime, come on in and draw my triangle sides now. Let me shorten this a bit, rotate it up. And now I gotta make it longer. There it is. And there we go. And again, right here, I see that the two triangles are congruent. Whoop, there we go. All right. I love the way these kind of pictures look once you've drawn them in because there's so much parallelism going on here, right? All of these vectors are parallel to one another. That's what we mean by in the same direction, right? Two parallel lines are heading in the same direction because if they weren't, they would eventually intersect each other. So vectors that translate an object are always in the same direction. Okay, so let's talk about translations in the coordinate plane. Hopefully I can plot the points right. Translations are particularly easy to describe when working in the coordinate plane. Exercise number three. Triangle ABC is pictured with vertices at A, negative three comma six, B, three comma eight, and C, negative four comma two. How would you describe the translation required to map point A to its image point A prime three comma three? So how would you describe what happened to point A to take it from here at negative three, six and slide it down here to three comma three? Pause the video and see if you can give me a description of it. Well, we can really talk about left, right, and up and down, right? What happened? We went from an X coordinate of negative three to an x-coordinate of positive three, which means we moved to the right six units. We went from a y-value of six to a y-value of three, which means we moved down three units. So, it moved, whoops, it moved a six units right, and three units down. All right, simple enough. Now let's think about an algebraic rule, letter B. Give an algebraic rule for this translation. Well, let's think about this for a moment. Let's put some parentheses down. In order to take an X coordinate and move it six units to the right, what we will have to do is take our original X value and add six to it, right? To take our y coordinate and move it down three units, we'll have to take our original y and subtract three. So that is our algebraic rule. Simple enough. Now let's finish off our translation, letter C. Translate points B and C using the same translation. Draw triangle A prime, B prime, C prime, Show the vertex mapping below. Awesome. Well, we already have where A prime mapped to. Let's do the others, right? So I'm gonna just get B here. B is at three comma eight, and let me write down C. C is at negative four comma two. Let me move that out of the way. So B prime, I'm gonna to have to add six to three, and that'll give me nine. 
I'm going to have to subtract 3 from 8, and that'll give me 5. For C prime, we're going to add 6 to negative 4, and that's going to be positive 2. And then we're going to subtract 3 from positive 2, and that's going to give me negative 1. So B is now going to be at 9, 5, or sorry, B prime is going to be at 9, 5. And C prime is going to be at 2, negative 1. And now I'm going to just hand sketch this in since I've forgotten my ruler. I forgot to bring my ruler to class. And we have our new triangle. Now what's really kind of cool is I could actually draw this vector in really quick. Okay. And you can see immediately that if I just moved this vector over to point C, right, then it's pointing at C prime. And if I move the vector up to B, it's then pointing at B prime, right? So again, in every single case, what we're doing is we're moving that point the same distance and the same direction as the vector that pointed from A to A prime. But of course, the beautiful thing is the algebraic rule is so simple, right? To move right or to move up, we add. To move left or to move down, we subtract. And we add and subtract the amount that we want to move. So, since we wanted to move right 6, we added 6 to the x-coordinate. Since we wanted to move down 3, we subtract 3 from the y-coordinate. Translations are probably the easiest transformation to occur in the coordinate plane. Probably the hardest thing about translations is to keep the word translation and transformation straight in your head because they sound very similar. Now we can certainly combine translations with other transformations in sequences to produce final images. So let's get a little bit of practice on that. Exercise number four. In the grid below, triangle HIJ has vertices at H, 1, 5, I, 8, 9, and J, 5, 3. Draw the image of HIJ after a reflection across the x-axis. Label the image H prime, I prime, J prime. Show the vertex mapping below. All right, this is pretty easy. Why don't you go ahead and do that mapping? All right, well keep in mind, right, we're reflecting across the x-axis. It's really critical anytime you have a reflection across one of the two primary axes that you get the right one, right? So I'm gonna be taking this triangle and I'm gonna be flipping it across the x-axis. Now remember, our rule for that was very, very simple, right? We simply wanna take the y-coordinates of each of these image points and flip their signs, right? And conveniently for us, the y-coordinates of all of these are positive, so when we change their sign, they're all gonna become negative. In other words, h, which is at one comma five, will get mapped to h prime, 1 comma negative 5 and I at 8 comma 9 will get mapped to I prime at 8 comma negative 9 and finally J at 5 comma 3 will get mapped to J prime at 5 comma negative 3. Let's get a prime mark there. Let's do it. We got 1 negative 5, 8 negative 9, and five, negative three, come on. Again, hand sketching in the triangle, because I left my ruler at home. H prime, uh, this is my, gonna be my J prime, and my I prime down here. All right, easy peasy. Let's take a look at letter B. Draw the image of triangle H prime, I prime, J prime after translation by nine units to the left and seven units up. Label the image triangle H double prime, I double prime, J double prime. Show the vertex mapping below. Okay, well, we're going to be doing a nine units to the left and seven units up, right? So what that means is my mapping will be X comma Y goes to X minus nine, that looks like a Y, X minus nine, y plus 7. All right, so that's what I want to do to each one of the points in triangle h prime, i prime, j prime. Cool. Let's do it. So h prime, which is at 1 comma negative 5, 
will get mapped to h double prime, and now I'm gonna do one minus nine, which is negative eight, and I'm gonna do negative five plus seven, which is positive two. And then i prime, which is at eight comma negative nine, will go to i double prime, eight minus nine is negative one, and negative nine plus seven is negative two. And finally, j prime, whoops, that doesn't look like a j, j prime at uh, five comma negative three, we'll go to j double prime, five minus nine is negative four, negative three plus seven is positive four, Let's plot them. Here we go. H double prime is negative eight, positive two. Negative one, negative two. And negative four, positive four. Let's draw it. Make sure I've got these things all right. That's H double prime, J double prime, I double prime. All right, and that's it. And of course, even though we didn't ask it in this problem, of course our final triangle is congruent to our original triangle because both the reflection and the translation are rigid motions, thus preserving both the shape and the size of the original pre-image. All right, let's keep going. A very important translation property. Now, translations have an important property that most other rigid motion transformations don't have. So, you know, all rigid motions have these basic properties like preserving distance and preserving angles. But then other rigid motions have specific other types of properties. And translations have a very important one. Let's take a look at exercise number five. Given line AB, shown below along with identical vectors at A and B, do the following. Letter A. Draw the image of line AB after a translation along the marked vectors. Label the image line A prime, B prime. All right, well, why don't you go ahead and do that? Well, I was just not big on rulers today. Um, so <laughs> this is where a prime is going to be, this is where B prime is going to be, and then I'm going to hand sketch the line that goes through two of them, both of them, because that is the best I can do. There is line A prime, B prime. Could have been worse. Not much, but it could have been. All right, so letter B. What appears to be the relationship between the original line and its image? Why don't you go ahead and write something down? All right, well, it appears that the original line and its image are parallel to one another. They, that, that just doesn't look like the word they. Let's try that again. They are parallel. And that is completely always going to be the case. When you take a line or a line segment, and you translate it in a direction that isn't like the direction of the line. So one thing we could do is we, if we took that line and we just sort of like moved it along itself, then it would just continue to be the straight line, right? But if we move it in some way that is, whoop, that is not in the direction of the line, then we produce a line that's parallel to it. And this is really cool. Translations of lines along vectors not parallel to the original line will produce image lines that are parallel to the pre-image line. So for instance, if I have line EF here, and I sort of translate it down here to get line E prime F prime, those two lines are parallel. One of the cool things that this program that I'm using right now will do is if I put a graphic down, I can actually ask it to infinitely clone it, which basically makes, means it'll make a copy of it, and then I can move that copy using a translation anywhere I want. So for instance, if I just move this up here, right, I've just translated it, and that line is parallel to that line, right? If I move this line up here, again, just a translation, that line is parallel to that one. That one's also parallel to that one, but etc. Right? The only way that I wouldn't get another parallel line is if I literally took the line and I just translated it 
in the same direction as the original line, then it's just the same line, right? But that's going to become an important property for translations. The idea that if I translate a line, I will get an image line that is parallel to the pre-image line. Okay. Just wanted to kind of like throw that out there. So today we worked with our final rigid motion, the translation. And there really are three basic rigid motions. There's the rotation, the line reflection, and the translation. All three of those rigid motions are extremely important. Translations tend to be the easiest of them all because we're literally taking points in the plane and we are moving them a particular distance in a particular direction. When you combine that distance and the direction together, we call that a vector. So we translate an object along a vector, which just again means taking every point in that object and moving it a certain distance in a certain direction. All right. And very easy in the coordinate plane because all we're doing is adding or subtracting to the X or the Y coordinates in order to move left, right, up, down. And then our final piece that we saw was with if we translate a line or a line segment, its image that is produced is parallel to the original line or line segment. Okay, all of those are going to be important. In the next lesson, we're going to be starting to combine all of these transformations together in sequences, which we've already done some of, um, but we're going to play around with it a lot more in the next lesson. For now, I just want to thank you for joining me for another geometry lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until I see you again, keep thinking and keep solving problems.